hello and welcome to Almost 30. Hey everybody, welcome to the show. It's your girls. <laughs> it's your girls. What's going on? <laughs> if you're an OG listener, welcome back. We've been doing this for about six years now. We just celebrated with our 500th episode, which is so wild. I was thinking about that the other day, just kind of reflecting back on the 500. And is 500 the right way to say it? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> at first right you said it three times and then I, <laughs> I, I, I <laughs> yo we've learned a lot about talking in h- hundreds of thousands of talking it's episodes 500th 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 okay 500th episode um and just thinking back to all the places that we've recorded episodes. Yeah. In our closets. On tour. On tour. In, in We broke into a shared workspace. Yes. In my West LA kitchen table. At my West LA kitchen table. Um, I remember so one time we did one episode and you were at your place. I was at mine and I didn't want to come over. So we did it on <laughs> Zoom. It was like so early. I was like, hey. <laughs> Figure out your priorities. Get in your car. Get in your car. Like, go over. And I was so fucking tired. Well, this is when we were working full-time jobs. Yeah, it was at the end of the day. I was just like, yo, I can't do this. And we, we needed to get the episode out. But I thought about that. I'm like, yo, that is just. <laughs> but now, you know, people do Zoom all the time. It's very normal. But oh, I definitely yeah. should have should have got over. But we've recorded a lot of different places. Yeah. And it's been, and it was fun to actually think about, especially in the West LA apartment, like the bigger guests that we had I know had exactly who you're over. talking about. There's like a handful. There was, I mean, we had, we had Jerry O'Connell come to Hilarious. my West LA one bedroom apartment. Yes. We had Angela Johnson. We had Dave Nikki Asprey. Nikki Glazer. Nikki Glazer. Um, uh, uh, who's the other comedian? It starts with an I. She just had a baby. God damn it. Oh. Um, An I. Maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we did. We had. Yeah. It. But I think that was more normal beginning. to be like, it was weird because that was a different time in podcasting because people weren't as professional. It wasn't as integrated. It wasn't like a full time thing for people. Yes. So it was more normal, but still it was weird to have them come over to your house. Mm-hmm. I remember being embarrassed. Like, we weren't embarrassed of your house, but we were just, like, a little embarrassed because we're like, oh, we want to be in a studio. And it was totally normal to be at the phase that we were at. Yes. But it was – it's just odd when someone comes in your home. Mm -hmm. And you're like, this is my home. Totally. People come over. So our office studio, I live here now. People come over like, oh, do you live here? And I never answer. (laughs) I just kind of like – Like, do you want water? (laughs) Yeah. I literally – I ignore it every time. I think there's water in here. I don't know. I'm like, like, don't mind the cats. (laughs) I'm like lock my cats in the bedroom because I just don't want to be like yeah this is my space it changes the mood totally to being to feeling yes. too intimate yes yes I completely agree completely so anyways <laughs> 500 episodes can you even believe it but that episode is out and we did kind of a recap mm-hmm. on the journey if you're interested and I'm looking forward to this episode where you talk a little bit about anxiety yeah I I I'm sure I know that I've been anxious my whole life, but I didn't really understand that I had anxiety until becoming an adult. And I think, you know, this this more um, collective conversation around mental health and anxiety and just self-development in general, um, I feel like there's a lot of you out there that are kind of understanding that, oh, that's actually my anxiety talking and that's my anxiety wanting to make that decision or choose that person or... Um, what have you. So I, I just wanted to bring it to the podcast because in therapy lately, I've been having this conversation with my therapist where (laughs) more, more than once she's like, you know, and we'll kind of peel back layers. She's like, and I think it's your anxiety wanting to either over function, over explain, um, trying to manage another's experience of you it's Mm -hmm. really that feeling of whether it's fear that someone will not agree with you Mm -hmm. or they will you know judge you in a certain way and it's just been really enlightening to be able to in the moment 
identify it as anxiety rather than get caught up and swept into like the the anxious feeling really Mm -hmm. you know Yeah. yeah it's an interesting thing it's like the paradox where does having the definition liberate you or does it Mm -hmm. imprison you Mm -hmm. you know because for some people it could be liberating and I think that's been my experience for things where I'm like oh this is liberating because I'm understanding sort of what's going on and then it's like that third thing you know it's you sure your experience and then the third thing the definition but then also it could be something where you're like using it as a way to define you but I think I didn't I wish I would have learned it earlier because I was experiencing it really for the most part in my and definitely in college and definitely in high school high school is when I had my first panic attack and I was starting to have really bad anxiety Mm -hmm. and then in college it was really bad Mm -hmm. I wish really wish I would have understood what it was then Uh, but it was more so depression at that point probably because I was drinking a lot and then when I was at my first job it was just horrible it was like I could not get out of bed I just hated Mm -hmm. being awake because Mm -hmm. my thoughts never stopped yes and I was even talking to I had to open up a, a bank account I was at the bank and I was talking to this bank teller. We were talking about something. He's like, yeah, my thoughts just kind of, I can't get a hold of them. And I was like, I know exactly how that Mm -hmm. feels. And there's so many people that feel that. And it's so perpetuated by being online all day, being on social media, you know, being on our phones, like being in the future, being in the past on our phones, being just in this like digital world and situation where we're so out of our body we're so in our heads all the time yes it's it, almost like the the speed of our thoughts mimics the speed of the internet yeah where it's like messages being sent and texts coming in yes and yeah and even being on like group text whether it's like friends or yeah. family i had one i was on a group text with um some family members the other day and we were talking about something super like light and i was giving my opinion and then like no one answered when i gave my opinion mm-hmm. and i swear to god for 20 minutes i spent spiraled into like oh my god I have to call them because like what if they Mm -hmm. don't understand what I'm saying (laughs) and I had to kind of check myself as to like okay what is this based on and usually for me it's like it's based on a past experience with either these people or just a past experience that triggers this feeling Mm -hmm. and I you and what I talk about in this episode is just ways in which also that I've been able to soothe in the moment and remind myself of the truth and -hmm. what's the truth you know in that moment it's like okay so if the people in this thread don't agree with what I just said will they abandon me forever Mm -hmm. no you know is it okay that we disagree yes is that part of being in a healthy relationship yes Mm -hmm. you know yeah I've been thinking about that as it relates to the mother wound and like the inner mother and now when I'm kind of in those situations it's like I keep saying to myself I'm like mama's here Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm like my inner mother is here Mm -hmm. and like it is all good Mm -hmm. like the inner mother is here to soothe whatever anxiety whatever stress that I'm feeling or experiencing but it's funny because I used to be like so um, open and talking about my anxiety and my mental health earlier on in the podcast and I haven't really talked about it since because I feel like it's now been something that I'm not thinking about myself in relation to it mm-hmm. because I'm just like, oh, I'm, I'm in a mode or I'm in a mood or it, I don't know. In our space, there's so much to confuse it with. You're like, is it the moon? Is it my sleep? Is it my adaptogens? Yes. Like it's actually like I you're like, I'm a Pisces. Yeah, so. literally I'm a Pisces. <laughs> and so I don't know. Like right now it's like I don't even know if I define it as that because there's also so many factors that yes. seem to be contributing to it that mm-hmm. I don't know well yeah and I I talk about like, this did I just too. watch euphoria yeah exactly exactly where it's being able to control what you can control as far as your anxiety there are going to be thoughts and experiences yes. and memories that come up and are triggered and all of these things but are you like helping yourself in other ways so it's like yeah did you watch did a you drink TV a bang show? energy and then watch euphoria <laughs> yeah. like please tell literally. me literally yes I, dude that's the whole thing is everyone's like drink like addicted to coffee and caffeine and then watching those shows that are Mm -hmm. like crazy yeah but I heard it's a dope show so I'm not hating on it I heard it's dope I've been on my I took the break in December from IG and I feel like in the last few weeks I've been on my phone a lot yeah and I've just noticed get that dopamine back up your body's (laughs) like yo bitch but it's like and you know we it's 
sacredness time. It's all these things. So it's like I'm kind of on my of phone, prim- you know, doing all that. But I've noticed I'm like, oh, wow. OK, like that. That part of me is always there. And I we know. always got to be kind of monitoring how she's feeling, what she really needs. And do you feel worse? Yeah. Dude. A hundred percent. I I mean, that, oh, that yeah. makes perfect sense. Yeah. I know. I was th- I was bitching all about that today. We had our new employee come over. <laughs> she's like, how are you? I'm like, well. <laughs> <laughs> and I, like, we're supposed to talk about You're like, I'm Krista. <laughs> I, like, I sat down for like 10 minutes. It was just like bitching about stuff. <laughs> I was like, in case you wanted to really know what the heck's up with my life. I will tell you. I will tell you. I will tell you. Um, but I'm excited for this. And also the other thing about anxiety, you know, I was when I was talking to that my my little bank teller friend about it. It's always the thing where meditation has been the most important thing for me mm-hmm. within this. Um, but it's always that thing where it's like, yeah, everyone says that. You know, it's kind of like the obvious thing and it seems like the hard thing and it seems like the thing doesn't that doesn't give you results immediately. Yes. So it's not often the way or path that people want to go because of that fact. So it's always hard because I'm like, well, meditation was, you know, it might be something else for someone else. It could be medication. It could be mm-hmm. um, a change in lifestyle, whatever it is. It could be something totally different for other people. But for me, that was like the number one thing that helped. But it's always like the unsexy thing. Yes. And it's the practice. Yes. You know, it's not like that one time do this and you'll be good. It's definitely, definitely a practice. But I'm excited to hear from you all um, just about this. And again, I think it's your point about not over identifying with the anxiety. And that's what I've had to learn, too, where it's like I don't say I'm an anxious person. Mm -hmm. It's like I have moments where. Yes. My anxiety is present and yes, and I'm able now to kind of identify it quicker and really work with it and be able to interpret it because it has a deeper message for me every time and something that I could um, more deeply work with in a grounded way. So thanks y'all for listening. We do solo episodes a couple times a month, both Krista and I. So if you ever want to hear, you know, a certain t- topic talked about or ask a question, you can always DM us on Instagram. Yes. We love you so much. We have new episodes every Tuesday and Thursday. Again, we have 500th of them just waiting <laughs> for you to dig into on topics in spirituality, wellness, personal growth, some entrepreneurship. So you can dig into the library and subscribe to almost 30. I highly recommend it. Almost 30 com. You can learn more about us. You can read our blog. We have tons of amazing blog posts. We even have a new quiz. You can figure out which star system you're from. So I did all my alien <laughs> research and I created a quiz where you can figure out which star system you are from on our website, almost30.com. Thanks for listening. I'll subscribe. Make sure this episode and every other is in your inbox every single week and we will see you on the other side. We'll be back in just a moment, but first we want to share a little bit about the sponsors who support this episode. I'm sitting on it right now, the Braxton Sleeper Sofa from Joybird. It is like the the queen piece in my second bedroom slash podcast lounge here in Brooklyn. She turns into a pull out couch so she turns into a bed for any guests but on her own as a couch she is a regal gorgeous and of the highest quality i love joy bird so much y'all know it is no secret almost 30 is obsessed with joy bird we have used joy bird to um, design decorate our la studio as well as our brooklyn podcast lounge now and joy bird if you don't know makes incredible customizable furniture and modern home decor it lets you bring your unique style into your space i love this customizable option and they have so many choices so many so many vibrant durable fabric options y'all you are going to have fun designing your furniture choose from over eighteen thousand customization options or browse curated collections to find the perfect piece for your one-of-a-kind style you can also book a virtual showroom appointment to chat with a showroom stylist from the comfort of your own home i also have the jolie swivel chair it is just gorgeous it's like this daisy yellow it is comfy it's fun it swivels and again the quality is unmatched 
With Joybird's protection plan, your upholstery and leather pieces will always look good as new without having to treat them like you're in a museum, you know what I mean? And Joybird is committed to creating quality furniture and a more sustainable future. Each piece is made with incredible care using responsibly sourced materials free of harmful chemicals. So important. And through partnerships with groups like One Tree Planted, Joybird is helping conserve and restore Earth's most precious natural resources quality craftsmanship, stain and scratch resistant fabrics, and limited lifetime warranty. Joybird's furniture can handle anything your family throws at it. I literally, li or me, literally. <laughs> 90 day returns. It's amazing. Joybird stands by its quality and craftsmanship. If it's not everything you hope for, just send it back. Excited for you. Create a space that brings you joy with Joybird. Get ready for Joybird's good luck sale. Joybird.com slash almost 30 and get 30% off your purchase. Y'all, this discount is insane. I stand by it. I'm like, I can't believe you're giving 30% off. How incredible. Joybird.com slash almost 30. Get 30% off your purchase. That's 30% off at joybird.com slash almost 30. Hi, everybody. It's Linz. Welcome to another solo episode. I always feel so honored to be able to bring a solo conversation, a heart talk, something that is just relevant for me right now in my life, 2022. It's March 2022, and I wanted to talk about meeting my anxiety later in my life. I feel like I met my anxiety as an adult, and it was kind of shocking and a bit shame-inducing that I hadn't really owned or worked through some of the anxieties that I found were coming up, especially as I hit my 30s. But as we all know, on a deep soul level, what we are going through in this present moment, what is presented to us is a perfect energetic match for where we are and a perfect match for our growth and evolution. And I'm excited to dig in with you all. So if you can relate, perhaps you've felt and identified your anxiety for much longer and you know it quite well, or perhaps you, like me, met your anxiety or are meeting your anxiety now, or perhaps you haven't quite met it yet and this episode might bring to light and make clear some things that ha you have been experiencing that you haven't been able to really own and work through. So what does this mean, meeting your anxiety later in life? I, <laughs> it's my belief that I've always had some anxiety for the most part, I think from a young age. Um, for most of my life, I just didn't have the awareness of what this feeling or these feelings really were. It wasn't really a conversation when we were young, and that's no fault of my parents at all. It's no fault of my teachers, but this wasn't a conversation. It might have looked like now. Uh, how are you feeling? Are you feeling frustrated? Are you feeling anxious? Are you feeling uh, disconnected? And being able to walk children through these feelings wasn't really done when I was younger. I'm so glad it's being done more now. Um, but any overwhelming feeling that I would have throughout my life up until my 30s, any sensation uh, that felt too much or just kind of polarizing um, would be my anxiety. And I would really do my best to cover it up, shut it down and or put a mask on it. I have a performance background, and so I'm really good at making everything seem like it's okay just to get through and not necessarily bring others into the overwhelming feeling that I'm feeling. But the truth is, is that anxiety is incredibly, incredibly helpful in steering us towards growth. It's incredibly helpful helpful. It's like a little flag. It's like over here, <laughs> over here. Yes, this overwhelming feeling. I know it's a lot, but let's be here. It will steer us towards growth. It will steer us towards th truth. It will steer us towards truth and expansion. And so I'm excited. Like anytime I have an anxious feeling, initially I'm like, Ooh, and then I'm like, oh yeah, 
<laughs> this is good. This is an opportunity. And I've gotten into the habit of that. And that takes practice. So I'm excited to just really inspire your own relationship with your anxiety getting in right relationship with your anxiety and being able to in the moment really be with it, learn more about it and then leverage it for some really powerful transformation and manifestation. Anxiety usually rears its head most strongly in times of deep, profound transition. (laughs) So if I think about seasons of my life or moments in my life that were really profound, my anxiety was the highest. So I, for example, moved from LA to New York. Um, It'll be a year in May, which is kind of crazy. And I remember that my anxiety came out to play in full force. This was a really exciting transition, but the thought of changing more than 70% of my daily life just brought about this sense of, oh no, (laughs) what will that mean? What will that mean for my mental health, my physical health? Uh, Will I be able to create a, a new life, a new life with my partner? What is it going to be like when we move in together? And what anxiety in that, uh, example caused me to do was try my very best to control every part of this process. And, you know, I think there's a healthy expression of that, but it became really unhealthy when I was trying to control other people so that I felt better about the process. And thankfully, at that time, I had been in therapy for a few years and I knew that this was my anxiety speaking to me. And it was in my anxiety telling me so clearly because I sat down with it and we'll go over that process in a little bit, but I sat down with it and it was telling me, you have made a beautiful transformative decision and now you must surrender. You've done all that you can do. So, Let's see what this ride is going to be like. And it was hard. It was hard to let go of control and it was a hard to let go and trust. But what ended up happening was every day leading up to the move, during the move, and once I was moved was an adventure. And it was so cool. My anxiety was no longer paralyzing me when I woke up in the morning, it was, and if it showed itself again, it was just guiding me to refinement. It was guiding me to be able to refine like, hmm, okay, like what do I really need right now? What do I really need right now? Do I need to slow down? Do I need to call a friend and just laugh? Do I need to write out my fears and burn them? (laughs) You know, um, it caused me to slow down. I was really able to take in more moments than I ever have before. And it made the process so freaking beautiful. In the process of getting to know my anxiety and realizing that this was what was happening, I started to really break down how my particular anxiety would show up. And this was helpful because then I was able to, in the moment, be like, ah, yeah, okay. There's there's the little flag that's like, this is anxiety. (laughs) A little label that was like, this is anxiety. And for me in particular, and I want to encourage you to start noticing what it looks like for you and write it down so that you can get really good at identifying it and then working with it rather than allowing it to take over uh, all of you, right? So for me, this shows up first in sensations in my body. Specifically, I will shake, (laughs) my stomach will flip, I'll be um, suddenly not hungry. Sometimes it is a headache, Um, but those are the three that really show up most prominently. I also experience brain fog. So when I have intense anxiety, I am unable to 
just really put together my thoughts. Um, my memory is, is pretty bad. Um, and I am unable to clearly express myself to in a grounded way express myself. It almost feels like I'm floating. It feels like my feet are not on the ground. It can be incredibly frustrating. Um, it also shows up as self-judgment. Anyone ever get into a self-judgment spiral and feel like you just can't get out and feel like you are believing every word and every thought you think? It can be so paralyzing, but that's my anxiety. I will just go in on myself. You're not doing enough. You are not worthy of this. You know, you are not as blank as this person. Um, and it's sneaky because I don't always say it out loud. It's all running in my head. It's like this script in my head. And then my experiences reflect that. It starts with the thoughts and then the experiences. So it would just create this like loop of thought experience that was rooted in anxiety and rooted in an untruth and rooted in what has yet to be looked at and healed. And if you are on your healing journey, you know that truly goes nowhere. It really goes nowhere. It also shows up for me in seeking external validation and confirmation. Now, I'm not saying seeking validation is always bad. I think there is a healthy version of that. Um, But when anxiety is running the show, seeking validation outside of ourselves becomes the first line of uh, seeking truth rather than defaulting to your internal guidance system, your soul. So when I am super anxious, I am not trusting myself. I am uh, looking to other people, um, perhaps on social media. I am just really far, far, far off my center. I'm wondering if any of these you relate to. And if anything came up as far as how your anxiety shows up, I would love for you to write it down right now, whether it's in the notes on your phone or just on a piece of paper, how your anxiety shows up. I want to be super clear, get really specific. If it shows up for you in, um, you know, your mouth gets dry or, you know, like me, you start to shake or perhaps, you know, it's just a flood of emotion and you can't stop crying. Um, Or perhaps it's picking a fight with everyone you see, right? Um, Let's get really specific and very honest. This process requires your honesty. Now, on the point of those big, big feelings, it can feel like an ocean. I often have tsunami dreams. i um, not sure if anyone else does. And those are indicative of, you know, what's going on in this, you know, reality, which is usually pointing to the intense emotion that I might be experiencing or processing or about to process. Sometimes it's like predictive. It's kind of crazy. My dreams work like that. Um, And often in this reality, when we feel those big emotions, we resist the feeling because it's a lot. (laughs) It's like it can literally feel like you are drowning. And if you are a person who is busy on the daily and has a lot of goals you want to accomplish and a lot of people that you um, serve every day, report to every day, do things for every day, I can understand on a human level that dealing with emotions isn't high on that priority list. It feels like everything else must come first and then we'll deal with it. But if you resist this feeling and just wish it away and sweep it under the rug, the more you resist, the more it will persist. And then it will start to ooze into every experience you have at work, with your family, with your friends with the cashier at the grocery store, like this will ooze into every experience. So 
I want us to really, really get clear today. And I want us to commit to prioritizing this awareness around your anxiety and relationship with. Because again, if we resist it, if we resist these feelings that are coming up, it will persist. It will persist. We hope you're enjoying this conversation. We're going to take a few moments to share brands with you that we love and who support this show. Feeling my best has always started with what I eat. And so if you are feeling like you need a reset, a recalibration of just what feels good to your body, what fuels your body, let me recommend Sakara. So Sakara helps you to not just live a healthy, balanced lifestyle, but truly enjoy it. I am obsessed with their delicious plant-rich meals and functional wellness essentials. I feel so radiant when I am on my Sakara game. And their whole organic ingredients are just so unique. I feel like I have a private chef. Every time I order Sakara, it comes straight to my door, ready to eat meals, prepared with so much love, so much thought, crafted by chefs, breakfasts, lunches, dinners, unbelievable. They are made to help boost your energy, support your digestion, curb your sugar cravings, and get your skin glowing. So if this sounds good to you, I could not recommend Sakara enough. I've had so many friends try Sakara and be like, oh my God, thank you for the recommendation. I'm currently waiting on my next Sakara delivery and I'm looking forward to those orange blossom waffles with blueberry compote. Such a yummy breakfast in the morning. I also really, really love um, the Montresor salad. This is quinoa, roasted beets, macadamia, and ricotta, uh, citrus vinaigrette, and their pasta a la vodka with a kale parmesan, quote parmesan, because it's not uh, real cheese, but made with nuts. It is so delicious. So that is on its way. You can explore their menus at sakara.com slash almost Sakara. So that's S-A-K-A-R-A dot com slash almost Sakara and use the code almost Sakara at checkout to get 20% off your first order. That's a major discount. So please take advantage. Sakara dot com slash almost Sakara. Use the code almost Sakara for 20% off your first order. Each evening I am taking a raise calm and their bloat formulas, and I'll tell you why. I am into resting and digesting at the end of a day, and uh, they actually have the rest and digest kit, so you can get both, and y'all, these products truly work, and they work so freaking fast, and they've uh, formulated these supplements to do that specifically. So for example, the bloat formula are a blend of five herbs and a fruit-based digestive enzyme that target every possible cause for bloating so you feel relief super, super quick. And the ingredients are sourced from the most potent part of every plant. So it ensures that the formulas work in under an hour. It's unbelievable. So I take the bloat formula before um, I eat my dinner. You can take it before or after. I take it before and then I take their calm formula after dinner. So this really helps me to rest, to digest, get ready for bed. It really signals to my body like we're ready to wind down. The calm formula itself is so good for herbs, minerals, and vitamins, which help relax the mind and body. Um, You might know these ingredients could be familiar to you. Magnesium, L-theanine, organic passion flower, and they are obsessed with the quality of their ingredients. I love Array and the founder, Sif, has been on the podcast. So check out that episode, Um, Array.com. A-R-R-A-E dot com. Code almost 30 for 10% off your purchase. Try it out. Highly recommend. A-R-R-A-E dot com. Use the code almost 30 for 10% off your purchase. I read Bringers of the Dawn um, over the holiday and I just keep it by my bedside and I dip into it basically every day. Um, I did a membership episode Uh, with my favorite learnings from Bringers of the Dawn. So if you're a member, make sure you listen to that episode. 
Um, but in Bringers of the Dawn, which is a channeled book by Barbara Marciniak, she channels the Pleiadians. Um, and I really relate to Pleiadian messages and teachings. Um, I believe I am a Pleiadian. <laughs> um, the Pleiadians speak about emotions, and I would love to read this excerpt from, from Bringers of the Dawn. You must learn to love your emotions. As long as you describe something as difficult, you are making it difficult. No one else is. You are resisting and judging the changes coming about. You are feeling that you do not know what is going on and you wish to be in control. Control is something very convenient and very handy. It must be applied at the right place at the right time, like super glue. Super glue in the wrong place doesn't do much good. Did you ever super glue your hands or lips together? <laughs> You must learn to exercise control in the way you use super glue. If you screw up with a super glue, you get stuck and you can't do anything. Control is the same way. You get stuck with it and it sticks you to something that you don't need to be stuck to. You must be very selective about what you decide to control or not control. The old human pattern or the paradigm that exists says you must be in control. I'm going to keep reading. You, as members of the family of light, which is what the Pleiadians call us light beings, are having an awakening. You need your emotions. You must become friends with your emotions because through feelings, you can climb the ladder to the multidimensional self and the 12 chakra system and explore what you discover. Through feelings, you can tell if something is going on or not. The logical mind will disinvolve itself when something is going on if the body is not plugged into feeling. Feeling registers frequency change. Logical mind does not register frequency change. You are experiencing an awakening. If you're watching on YouTube, my eyes are wide. <sighs> Let's take a few deep breaths. Keep those breaths going because sometimes when truth comes through and we hear it in such a way, we need to take a moment and take space to really integrate what we have received. You need your emotions. And what anxiety does is it makes you ashamed, afraid, avoidant of these emotions. But really, the truth is that they are the key. They are the key to realizing and discovering all of the multidimensional aspects of who you are, which ultimately makes us love so much, love all aspects of who we are. I want to talk about this process of feeling these feelings. And I want to add that when we feel these feelings, we are not meant to identify as these feelings or as, in this case, the anxiety. We are not saying, I am anxious. I am experiencing anxiety. And the goal really is to acknowledge that it exists and that you are experiencing it and commit to following the feeling to the root. Anxiety, when given the power, will do a lot. <laughs> it will do a lot of damage. And so if we are able to shine a light and say, huh, hi, <laughs> how are you? I know you are not me. I am experiencing you. And most likely because I haven't felt some things. So... Let's work together. 
if you do not shine a light and become aware of this, the anxiety will become so, uh, I kind of think of it as like, it kind of grows, you know, like you put that little action figure in water and like they grow to like this crazy size. It's like, that's what will happen to your anxiety when you're looking away and resisting it. For me, I know that I've let my anxiety fester and just kind of take the wheel. When? Let me give you a few examples. When I want to control every outcome, when I'm obsessed with controlling what happens and ultimately controlling like the end result, which is so limiting, but it feels good to try and control it because it quells my anxiety in the moment. My anxiety also just listens to the thoughts in my head that are mostly skewing negative. So only listens to the thoughts in my head. Anxiety doesn't really listen to the soul. Anxiety is just having this like constant conversation with the thoughts in my head. And they're like, yeah, so right? (laughs) Yeah, she's not worthy, right? Right. Yeah, no, it's crazy. She really, you know, sometimes she thinks she is, but she isn't. And then, you know, (laughs) constant loop. Sometimes my anxiety makes me numb out. My anxiety makes me uh, numb out in the ways of being on my phone way too much, scrolling Instagram. Um, My anxiety makes me numb out by isolating myself. And alone time is very powerful. You know me. I'm a proponent. But sometimes it is this forced isolation because I'm uh, too overstimulated by my anxiety that I can't be around other people. My anxiety also loves to convince me that there are limitations to my life and to who I am, which is not true. In Bringers of the Dawn, the Pleiadians say we are limitless. We have no limitations, despite what you might think despite what you might see in the world. We do not have limitations. My anxiety wants me to believe that everything is difficult. It's crazy. Like when I would go out to LA for work over the last like eight or nine months since I've moved, I would bring with me this anxiety of like, everything's hard. Oh God, I have 10 days. How am I going to get through and all these interviews and all this work and working all day and every single day and I would bring with me this anxiety and I would not talk about it. I would not tend to it. I would not look at it for what it really was. And once I was able to speak to it and understand the root of it, literally my whole experience changed. I found more fun in it. Krista and I were just like having a blast and being really productive. But because I was dragging along my anxiety and these anxious thoughts and these negative thoughts about, oh, I have to do this. Oh, this is so hard. Oh, this is so tiring. And really not taking care of myself, it became my reality. The thoughts created my reality and my anxiety was at the root of those thoughts. Now, in the moment when I am experiencing anxiety now, I have like this really quick, well, sometimes quick, um, now it feels quick, step-by-step process that I would love to share with you because I think it can be really, really helpful. And then I want to close with a little bit of a life audit to make sure that we aren't engaging in anxiety-inducing behaviors without knowing. And I was doing this and I cleaned it up and it's helped so much. So let me first talk about this practice that I do in the moment when I know I'm experiencing anxiety. Again, notice how you use your words. It's not, I am anxious. It is, I am experiencing anxiety. It creates a little bit of space between you and the anxiety. So you can look at it rather than feel like, oh my God, it has overtaken me. Practice I do in the moment. First, I come back to my body. So often with my experience of anxiety, I feel it in my body first. My stomach will drop. I will start shaking. Uh, My jaw tenses. I get a little TMJ action. Um, Yeah, those those are some of the most common. And so how do I come back to my body? A couple ways I can do this depending on where I am, right? So apply 
to what your experience is. One way I do this is to literally jump around almost in this like frenetic, free, ecstatic way. And sometimes I'll put on music just to kind of get it moving. I love music. It's so healing. Um, But what this really does is remind me that, hi, hello, you are in a body. You are in a body. You are having a human experience. This anxiety is not the highest expression, though it is going to serve you and guide you. But let's bring you back to the body. And so I'll, you know, rub my arms, I'll uh, lightly tap on my body, heart space, even like light taps on my head, perhaps on my legs and really just root down. Sometimes I'll stomp. I'll literally stomp and let out a sound like, huh. And usually that clears some of the frenetic energy that anxiety can bring to my body. I might also, to come back to my body, use my breath. So if I am in a place where I can't be stomping around and ecstatically moving, I will sit, close my eyes, place one hand on my lower belly and one hand on my heart, breathe into my lower belly, breathe into my chest, and let out an exhale, open mouth. Do that really slowly. And feel the sensation of your lower belly expanding into your hand, your heart expanding, and then exhaling and just clearing, setting the intention to clear. Sometimes I will just let out sound. I'll be in the shower, maybe I'm in the car, and to come back to my body, I will let out sound. And what I believe this does is really like stimulate the cells. I I see sound as this frequency that has the ability to go into the nooks and crannies of our being and just go, "Ah, here you are. And this is what the truth is. So sometimes I'll just go, "Ah, ah, 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 ah," (laughs) and really just let it out. Sometimes it'll be a bit more ecstatic and explosive, whatever you need and allow it to be fully expressed. So don't stop it. Let the inhale And the full exhale be the expression of sound. (laughs) You feel me? Okay. Number two, I set an intention because I know I'm about to work with my anxiety. And so that is going to be specific for you. But intention is so important. I am learning this in real time. I feel like this last year has really been the year of intention for me. And I know they say at the top of the year, like, what's your intention for the year? I'm like, my intention is intention, beach. (laughs) It's intention. And it's changed so much for me. It's so simple. It's free. You can do it in every moment or just to start your day. Um, But for me in working with my anxiety, my intention Let's say right now I'm going to feel into (sighs) my intention today with this anxious feeling that is coming up is to be really honest with it. And my intention is to invite its honesty to come to the table. My intention is to move through this. (sighs) and my intention is not to overanalyze, right? So bring your own intentions every time you work with your anxiety. I promise you it will change your experience. I can't really explain it any other way than that. Number three, I start to have a conversation with my anxiety, and this is the final step And this might look like a literal conversation where you are talking out loud, almost like talking to yourself, but you're talking to your anxiety, which is separate than you. It is what you're experiencing, but it's separate than you. And maybe you record this in a voice memo. Maybe you're just talking out loud. It's in this way that you are able to articulate the feeling without censoring yourself, without worrying how it sounds, just really ripping. And I know that in doing this, there will be some truths that come up that will surprise you. And so 
knowing that, I want you to have a pen and paper nearby just in case anything comes up that you're like, whoa, I didn't actually realize that that's what I was holding on to. Write it down. If talking isn't your thing, perhaps it's journaling. And I always recommend uh, getting into a meditative state beforehand and then writing to your anxiety. I write to my soul on a regular basis, but I've started to write to my anxiety. You could also write to your soul about your anxiety. I think you will get uh, very interesting and truthful answers either way. You might also bring this conversation into a conversation with another person. I highly recommend being one-on-one with your anxiety first and then bringing that conversation to someone else if that's what you desire. And this has to be someone that you trust, someone that can listen and not necessarily just dump or project their own experience or advice onto you not taking into account your very unique, specific experience. Sometimes just having this one-sided conversation with someone can bring to light a lot of truth. And from there, we just glean a little bit more insight, a bit more awareness, and perhaps one or two next steps from what your anxiety shares with you. What do you need right now, really? What do you need more of or less of? What is it trying to tell you in this moment? And then you will know. And then you can take the next best step for you. So number one, get into your body. Get into your body. Number two, set the intention before you begin talking to your anxiety. And then have the conversation, whether written, spoken out loud, or brought into a conversation with another person, maybe even your therapist. And then it will tell you the next best step because it will tell you what's really going on and what it really needs. We'll be back in just a moment. But first, we want to share a little bit about the sponsors who support this episode. I am on my sleep gummy game. As you know, we are... House of Wise fans, huge House of Wise fans. We're actually investors as well. And y'all, I walk this talk. I am taking my sleep gummies every single night and they truly work. What I find with some other CBD brands is that it's not as potent. It doesn't really work. And when I'm taking CBD, I really want it to work. (laughs) The sleep gummies, y'all. Okay. They have melatonin and the full spectrum hemp derived CBD. It's a whole plant extract containing a full spectrum of naturally occurring synergistic cannabinoids and terpenes. They play super well together and y'all, this really works. I take one before bed and I am out and just sleeping so soundly. I wake up with a lot of energy. I love, love, love these gummies. I also really love the sex gummies. They are a cult favorite in almost 30 nation. If you haven't heard of them, I'm surprised because everyone's using them and having some really, really beautiful intimate time with themselves or with a partner. In the sex gummies, they have horny goat weed. This is a Chinese herb known as the epimedium plant, the active ingredient. Uh, Has been known to increase blood flow to all the right areas, if you know what I mean. Also has maca root, ashwagandha, and the hemp derived full spectrum CBD. I love this brand because Amanda, the founder, is all about empowering women to take control of their lives, especially their sleep, stress, and sex, and now strength. They have some strength gummies I would love for you to check out. Uh, But I love this brand. I trust them. They are obsessed with quality. So try them out for 20% off. Go to houseofwise.co. Use the code almost 30. Houseofwise.co. We invested in this brand, believe in this brand, use them every single day. Use the code almost 30 for 20% off. Okay, starting your own business is a roller coaster. I'm sure a lot of you are uh, nodding your head. There's fear, there's excitement, followed by that in and over your head feeling. Kristen, I have been there, but with the right tools, and we are speaking from experience, you can juggle it all with confidence. And that's where HoneyBook came and saved the day for us. And I'm so excited for you to try HoneyBook, okay? This tool has truly streamlined so many parts of our process. 
For example, jobs get booked with less back and forth. You stay in control of what's online and what's in person. Clients get a great experience. So your customers, your clients get a great experience and you get to manage everything in one place. That's HoneyBook, client interactions done right. And with loads of automations, integrations, and project management tools, HoneyBook gets your business running smoothly so you have more time to focus on what you do best. How does that sound? With HoneyBook, there's no more bouncing from system to system. You stay super organized, focused, and moving towards your goals. Plus, it gets you booked and paid faster, which we all can agree is a win-win. So start your free trial at honeybook.com slash almost 30. I'm so pumped for you. This is going to be a game changer. Honeybook.com slash almost 30 and enjoy 30% off your first year. What a major discount. 30% off your first year, no matter which plan you choose. And right now, almost 30 listeners, you'll get 30% off your entire year. Head to honeybook.com slash almost 30. That's H-O-N-E-Y book.com slash almost 30 to get started for free. Get 30% off your first year, no matter which plan you choose. Okay, I want to finish with just a little life audit, some reminders to check. Just in case there are some habits that are creating anxiety without you knowing. Okay, number one, and this is from my own experience, so please do your own audit, trust your intuition, trust what comes up. Number one, what are you doing for activity, workouts? Are you doing enough? Are you doing uh, too many? Are they too intense? Are they workouts and uh, movement that you dread? Do you go to a certain class every single week and the music's way too loud and the instructor is rude (laughs) and the lights are down low and red or something like that? You know, like, does it cause you anxiety? Notice. I want you all this week to have a little notebook where you can just take note of like, hmm, that actually didn't feel amazing. And I think it's causing me some anxiety, whether it's leading up to doing it or afterwards, or during, and just noticing. So your movement, your workouts, are you following uh, your cycle if you are a woman? Are you doing HIIT workouts during your period? Is that causing you anxiety and discomfort and pain? Next audit is on food. What are we putting into our bodies? Now, I know this is very specific to everyone, so I'm just going to speak from my experience. My experience is that When I am having too much sugar, my anxiety skyrockets. When I am not getting enough animal protein, my anxiety skyrockets. And this sometimes has to do with the levels in your body. Levels of vitamin D, uh, blood sugar levels. All of these work together, right? Everything, the emotional, the physical, the spiritual, everything works together. And so we really have to get down to the very specific things you are doing on a daily basis to make sure it's not exacerbating your anxiety. So just take note, are you having too much of something? Are you having too little of something that maybe intuitively or perhaps a lab test is telling you that you need? I highly recommend If you are feeling like something is off, that you get specific answers. We work with uh, BASE, which is an at-home lab test. It's super easy. This is not, they don't know I'm talking about this here. Um, But I found it to be incredibly helpful. My vitamin D levels were 50% of what they should be. And I was experiencing low levels of energy, which was adding to my anxiety. Because I wasn't able to really show up and just be myself every single day. Because I was so tired and uh, just dragging. So that has really helped and vitamin D in particular, like if, if your levels are low, they're not going to get better on their own. You have to like take action. So I supplement with vitamin D. I try to get salmon two to three times a week, which is a great source of vitamin D. And I also make sure to get as much sunlight as I can, even in the winter. So that's just an example, but take note of what you are putting in your body. Take note. For some people, that's also dairy could be causing, you know, some more mucus in the body. That could be adding to your anxiety. Your gut health. 
making sure that your gut microbiome is of utmost priority when you are putting things in your body. Um, the gut is the second brain, so I don't have to tell you that that also affects anxiety in a huge way. I am not a doctor, so I'm not going to go into it, but I am sure that if you do some reading on it, it will prove to be true because I've, I, I've read a lot on it. Um, next one is relationships. So just taking, doing a little audit on the relationships that you are um, in and really experiencing on a day-to-day basis or a weekly basis and which one of those or a few of those are bringing about some anxiety. Um, perhaps there's a communication style that is really, uh, yeah, bringing about a lot of uh, uncomfortable feelings. Uh, perhaps you feel misunderstood. Perhaps you don't trust this person. They don't trust you. You'll know. It's a feeling. And so I really, it doesn't mean to end these relationships, but I do think it's inviting you to have a really honest conversation first with yourself and then possibly with this person. And being very intentional with how you want to experience this relationship and what you think might be supportive. Um, I, as an adult, I've had to have a lot of hard conversations in the last few years, whether it's with friends or family. And leading up to those hard conversations, I was anxiety ridden. And once we had those hard conversations, the anxiety just lessened and lessened. And it became, you know, a standard in our relationship to have honest conversations, which ultimately just brought the anxiety down. So take an audit. Some of those relationships, like perhaps coworkers, colleagues, bosses, what have you, you know, there, there might be not as much that you can do, but you can protect your energy. You really can. And are you putting too much thought, too much weight into what this person thinks, what they do, how they make you feel. I don't want you to assume that like you should just not care about this person and how they make you feel, but I need you to remember where your power lies and it's not with that person. You set the tone. You are the gatekeeper of what's truth and what's not. And you can ultimately set an energetic boundary and even maybe just like a direct boundary that you communicate with them that will reduce your anxiety around this person. And again, it's about shining the light on it. It's not about ignoring it. It's not about settling for less than what you deserve. It's really about shining a light and taking inspired action around this. Okay, next is also something you put in your body, possibly caffeine. Caffeine, caffeine, caffeine. Okay, so I drink one cup of coffee a day. It's my bulletproof in the morning that I make at home. Um, this works really well for me because the fat in the coffee helps it to be released slowly o- throughout the day um, and just feels really good to me. If I have straight up black coffee, it's a little, I know I'm going to have more anxiety. I had two cups of coffee a few weeks ago and I literally, when Sean got home, I was like, babe, I'm anxious. I am. I literally just said that I was like, I'm anxious. I can't, it's it. my shakes, I was so in my head, I couldn't form a thought uh, to like express to anyone. It was so frustrating. And I was like, damn it. I never have two cups of coffee. I never have two cups of black coffee. Like what is my problem? So I made a note and I will never do that again. You know, and we just got to be really real and honest with ourselves about the habits that are causing these moments. Um, alcohol, any other substances, um, just being aware what causes you anxiety? Do the Sunday scaries cause you anxiety? Okay, let's be real about it. Do you want to feel differently? Let's change that habit. Maybe you start off the night early with a glass of wine and then for the rest of the night you have club soda with lime. I mean, I'm not telling you not to drink. I'm not telling you not to smoke. I'm not, you know, like do what you want, but notice if it is adding to your anxiety. It definitely did that for me. I mean, the days where I was drinking a lot more than I do now, a lot, a lot, a lot more, I had so much anxiety. It was also causing physical changes. I had terrible acne. I was gaining weight. It was terrible, which then also caused me more anxiety. 
Next, social media. Let's definitely get real about it. Do you need to take a break? Do you need to unfollow certain people? Do you need to curate your feed? Do you need to mute certain people? Um, Do you need to set boundaries around when you are on and when you are not? Do you need to limit the amount of hours? Let's get very, very real and let's experiment. It doesn't need to be this hard and fast thing, but let's see how it feels to only be on Instagram for a two hour window in the morning. How does that feel? How does it feel to take a week off? How does it feel to take a day off? Experiment and see and be very, very, very like a little detective like, huh, oh my gosh, she was off Instagram today and she felt more creative and in her body and she felt much better and slept better. Oh my God, make note of that. (laughs) How amazing. (laughs) We got to be our own advocates. We got to be our own little detectives about our life. No one knows our life better than us. So we really got to, got to go there and take note, literally notes in a journal. Last part of the audit. And I'm sure there's other pieces that might come up for you. So please share it with me. Definitely DM me at Lindsay Simsick. Um, last part of this audit are TVs and TV shows and movies. Okay. Euphoria. Let me say a few words. Euphoria. How does it make you feel? (laughs) Squid Games. How does it make you feel? (laughs) Listen, no judgment. Rock on with your bad self. But when you're watching these shows, how do you feel? What are the sensations in your body? Do you have a good night's sleep afterwards? Are you thinking about the scene you just watched? Do you feel hopeless? Do you feel fearful? Do you start to have uh, paranoia in your own life based on what you saw in these TV and, and movies, TV shows and movies? Like, again, take note of this. So Sean and I were watching this show, Snowfall, last year. Super good show. It's amazing. We've actually just started up again because they released the season and I have created new boundaries around it. But we were watching the show. It's amazing. But there were just times when after we would watch, I would feel completely contracted. I would feel like my heart was closed. And I was like, oh, I don't feel great. I'm, I'm just a little anxious after what I just watched, whether it was like murder, this, that. I then transitioned with him into Ted Lasso. And I had a completely different experience with Ted Lasso. It was actually life-changing. I was like, wait a second. I'm laughing. This is light. These are shorter episodes. It's funny. We fly through them. There's kind of like conflict resolution all in one. It feels good. I just loved it. And I loved the way it made me feel. And I also know this about nature shows like Planet Earth, um, and other just like very light reality TV, like kind of gives me that just like, ah, okay, entertainment. But now that I've started up Snowfall again with Sean, I'm very mindful. When are we watching this? Will we have time afterwards to kind of just wind down even more and get into a more positive headspace after watching such an intense show? Um, I, I up my bedtime ritual when I am watching Snowfall with Sean on those days. Um, so just be mindful and advocate for yourself and what you require in order to be less anxious around the media that you are taking in news, TV shows, movies, really anything. Be very, very mindful. Okay. We did it. (laughs) We did it. I want to hear from you. I want to hear about your journey with anxiety. Has it been for a long time? Have you just met it? Have you, in listening to this podcast, realized that you are experiencing some anxiety? All of it, I see you. And I'm just so proud of you for taking it into your own hands to begin to speak to it, understand it, collaborate with it, really, and begin to follow the feelings a bit more following the feelings to the root and trusting yourself to do it and trusting that, you know, your soul, your spirit team, your guides, angels, your galactic team, y'all know I'm, we're woo-woo over here. So if this is surprising, just 
you know, um, but that you have the support. You are really never alone in, um, in approaching this. DM me at Lindsay Simsick, share this episode, make sure you tag me. And, um, I can't wait to be in conversation about this. This is something that I think a lot of people go through and I really haven't talked about it a ton and wanted to bring this to the forefront. I am ever in process. I am in therapy, um, and have a big support team to kind of help me move through these moments of intense anxiety and building a relationship with these feelings and understanding them, really moving and living through them rather than uh, trying to live around them. Thank you for listening. It means so much to me. Uh, Make sure you subscribe to the podcast. We put out solo episodes very often. So If you ever want to talk about something, make sure to let us know. But as always, just kind of bringing you in real time what's what's going on, what's true, what we're learning. And that's it. I will see you on the next one. Thanks for listening, everybody. Appreciate you. If you have any thoughts, reflections from the episode, feel free to DM me at Lindsay Simsick. And we have tons of other solo episodes that both Lindsay and I have done. If you're subscribed to Almost 30, they will come directly to your inbox. You can find us on Spotify, Apple, everywhere you listen to podcasts. And you can just search our names, Almost 30, and then all of our beautiful solo episodes will come up. We also have information about us and the podcast and the topics that we talk about on almost30.com under our blog. And thank you to our sponsors for this episode. You can find all discount information in our show notes or on our website, almost30.com slash partners. Thanks for listening. We will see you on the next one. We love you. Bye.